I bless you guys. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus Christ. You guys can go back and watch this video on our website, Abiding in Christ Ministries. That's Abiding in Christ Ministries org and our YouTube channel, Abiding in Christ Ministries 2018. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus Christ. This is our first of, I don't know how many parts we'll do of this, but the topic is what does biblical leadership look like? You guys can share the video. And you can find it on our Facebook page, YouTube page, and on our Twitter. Yeah, glory to Jesus Christ. God bless you guys. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Yeah, so we are talking about, this is our first, our Tuesday night Bible studies are dedicated to various topics. And this is our first topic on uh, what does biblical leadership look like? And so we'll do this about maybe maybe uh, four weeks straight on Tuesday at 8.35 p.m. And our Thursday night Bible study is for uh, the book of Revelation. Amen. So this is our first Bible study on uh, what does biblical leadership look like. And I'll bring Pastor Myers in here. So he can join us and we'll go into prayer. Please share the video. Uh, again, you can find the video afterwards. Afterwards, if you're watching on replay, you can find it on our website at abidingtochristministries.org and our YouTube channel, Abiding in Christ Ministries 2018. Excuse me, guys. So Tuesday nights is our uh, Bible study dedicated to different topics and Thursday night we've been doing uh, the book of Revelation verse by verse the study of the seven churches and we'll just keep going all the way to the end of the book of Revelation Father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we take authority over every demonic influence God all, th all things satanic we take authority over it right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and we thank you for your spirit, God. We pray that the Lord Jesus Christ is glorified, saints are edified, and, saint, and souls are saved, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that the saints would get the food and the manna from heaven that they need for the journey, Lord. Father, let us teach your word with clarity, Lord. Let the saints get on fire for you in this last and evil day. Father, I break the power of generational strongholds, curses, uh, shackles, the fetters, the bands of wickedness, God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, God, the blood of Jesus Christ is against you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for minds to be transformed, souls to be saved, and bondages to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let your word strengthen us, let your word heal us, let your word grow us, let your word transform us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. How you guys doing? Everybody, I see you guys. God bless you guys. Please share the video. Um, this is our first. I'll bring Pastor Myers in right now. Glory to Jesus Christ. Hey, brother. What's up, doctor? How are you? What's up, man? How is your day going? Oh, it's wild, man. How you guys doing out there? Amen. Good to see you, brother. Good to be seen. Good to see everybody. Amen. So I was telling the saints, and I, and I pray, you can pray again. Your camera's upside down. Is it? Did I, yeah, your uh -oh. camera. You're turning back around. Get the camera on the right way here. All right, right there. there you go. This yeah. Perfect. There right there, yeah. You can pray again if you want to. I try to pray so I don't forget. I'm forgetting, man. Try to jump right into the word. Uh, I was telling them that we have a lot of scriptures to get to, man. And yeah. we have a lot of um, word. Uh, it's just a lot to talk about, about this topic. And before we get into it, I want to say, I want to say this before we get into it. Nobody has arrived. Uh, we're all still learning. We're all still growing in Christ. Um, 
leaders fail, leaders fall, leaders rise again. You know what I mean? Yes. God mm -hmm. doesn't give up on uh, anybody unless your name is King Saul, then <laughs> that's a whole other topic in itself. But I want to say that none of us have arrived. None of us are perfect. None of us uh, have reached heaven yet anyway on earth. But God is still working with all leaders and God is still grooming us still. But having said that, having said that, when you've gotten to this point by the grace of God, when you've come to, you know, the age that we're, we're we have the age, I'm talking about our natural age, I'm not talking about spiritual age. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some things that you should have gotten down packed by now. And there's some things that you have, you should have gotten over by now, uh, as far as teaching God's word and leading God's people. So this series is dedicated to glorify Jesus Christ, edify the saints, and save souls. And that the saints, you know, the Bible, this is the gold standard right here. This is the standard. Not human beings. Jesus Christ is the standard. And so we want to start this topic, man, and we are going to talk about what biblical leadership looks like not the world standard not the company standard, right. not the churches the new age churches standard not yeah. uh the ceo standard not the world standard but the biblical standard and i'll let you jump in go ahead brother uh pastor Myers. i'm sorry First, i want to thank god for being here among so many warriors and god's people i love you guys uh, i just enjoy doing this uh one of the things they that I do, I love talking about the Word of God. You probably see it sometime when I talk. I just love talking about God. That's it. And throughout the years of growing in the Bible, I've always enjoyed talking about God. And for that, I got a lot of flack from people. Some people thought, according to other people, I was supposed to have ran off and became a pastor in the night because everybody thinks because you know Word is trying to become a pastor, but uh, now I waited, and I waited on God for him to tell me when to go, because you can be anointed, but not yet appointed, and a lot of times people can misunderstand you, they'll think that you want to be great or superstars, but my genuineness, and God knows this, has always been, I enjoy talking about God, and I didn't need Amen. a pulpit to do that, I just didn't, Dr. Brown, I never needed a pulpit, you I know. need a place just to talk about God. We used to sit up to the next morning, me and my friends and my brother, and to the next morning in 1983, just talking about God. That's right. it. And in a time we live in, because people you know, are age, age, now, age. they think when they hear you talk about God, oh, you want a position, oh, you're trying to be great. And they get these mm -hmm. crazy, whacked out concepts. But we love talking about God, and we enjoy winning souls. That's Amen. what we want to do, man. I mean, hey. But you will be misunderstood because you want to talk about God. People are going to think you're trying to be like some great preachers and other things. They, and you know it's coming from the enemy because sometimes people could just be straight up jealous of what God gives you. But when you love God, the Bible said just any two or three are gathered together in my name. I am in the Amen. Just love God. Amen. Some people do got different agenda, but if you just love God... He will reveal himself to you. He will show you things, and he will put you around other people that loves him, and you have what we call fellowship. Amen. And that being said, tonight is something that is really near and dear to my heart because I think in the 21st century, we have a strong lack. One of the great bishops came when my pastor died, uh, my pastor Benjamin Smith Sr., when he passed away. Uh, a pastor came from Florida named, um, I can't remember pastor name. Oh, my God. Anyway, he was preaching about the Ark of the Covenant, how David brought it back. And he was saying at that time, this was in 2001, I'll never forget it. He said the spirit of Ichabod is reigning in position, had gotten to the throne, the place of power. And that was in 2001. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. So listen. We are living in time where people are trying to make people who are not validated to be leaders, and they're trying to give them the baton, and they're giving them the stage to be a leader, and they, they're not a leader. 
So what we have done was put people in position who can't lead people. They don't like people. They don't care about people. They hate people. Any respectable person, but yet they're leading. So this is something I pray that will show people a good concept of what God leadership is. And as we go into this, this is going to be a blessing. Uh, me and Dr. Brown was talking about this earlier today. And we talked about, I think it was yesterday, because I'm so excited about this, because this is what it's all about. Uh, you I think God intended to have anointed leader. He said in the book of Jeremiah, I will give you pastors that's after my own heart. Pastors that love me, that love my word. And these are the type of pastor I'm going to give you. And so when you're dealing with leadership, it is something that is very important because we have a lot of people who have gone through theology school because they just wanted to be a leader. And a lot of people, some people, you know God called them because they teach and they break down the word. They do what leaders do. But other people, they just want the position or the recognition. Or for some, it's just about the bank account. But when yeah. you have a fire in your heart, and this is something that you was born to do, there's no doubt that God has called you to leadership. So we want to talk about what is a leader, first of all. How do you know if you are a leader? Is everybody called to lead? And um, what type of leader do you think God is looking for in this hour? Because the Bible says the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him. And that's not in words. Uh, perfect in desiring God. Like Dr. Ron said, nobody has arrived. But one thing I've learned about leaders, there are different types of leaders, so we should never try to put people in the shoes of another leader. They will never be no duplicate. God does not make duplicates. He makes originals. And right. when you are an original, you got to be the man or the woman that God has called to lead. And that's and the... Make that unique. Yes. That's the we'll get we'll we'll get into that verse. That's that uh, Ephesians five one. It says, "Be ye imitators of God as dear children." That that Greek word for imitators there is the word mimic. That's where we get mimic from. It means to imitate, to be like. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and there, like you just said, there is no a leader is not trying to make no one like him or herself. No. Nah. That's not, you know, when there's no carbon copy. You're trying to make everybody mm -hmm. like you. You're mm -hmm. trying to make everybody do what you're doing. You're trying to mm -hmm. make everybody a clone of yourself. There are no clones in the body of Christ. You know what I mean? There are no clones whatsoever mm -hmm. in the body of Christ. We no. are we are called originals. To, yeah, originals. We are called to point people to Jesus Christ. Everybody are not evangelists. Everybody are not pastors. Everybody are not prophets. Everybody are, are not teachers. You know, they're different administrations. You know what I mean? But the same spirit work at all in all, Paul says, helps, encouragement, uh, That's right. administrations. You know what I mean? People yes. do all kinds of things. And you know what? Now that we're on this topic of leadership and, and leading people, people fail to realize, and I'm not just saying this, to uh, back anyone's uh, train of thought, mm -hmm. people have to realize that some saints are designed to stay in the house of God and serve in the church, inside of the mm -hmm. church. That's their calling. That's what they're called to do. Everybody is not called. Now, they, they may evangelize on their job or you know mm -hmm. win souls in the home because we're all ambassadors for Christ. We're all yes. ministers of reconciliation. But to stand on the street corner and to preach, that's a specific gift and a calling that yes. not everybody has that calling. That's right. So a lot of times you might see somebody on the street preaching. They say, where's the rest of the church? Where's the rest of the church? They're out there, believe me. Mm -hmm. The people that God has called to be out there, you just do what God has called you to do. When I'm out there preaching, we're out there preaching. We're out there. We handle God's business. We're not looking for nobody else. We're out there doing what God called us to do. We're not out there to make clones of ourselves. We're not out there to call nobody else out. We're out there to bring glory to Jesus Christ and to win souls uh, for the kingdom. I'll let you finish out, and then we'll get into some uh, characteristics of leadership. I think the church is pretty much like what the whole body is. It's a mystery, but it's the right. whole body of Christ. 
as in we got eyes, we got mouth, we got teeth, and everything is needed. You got fingers, you got toes. Nobody want to take a picture of nobody's feet. <laughs> somebody went on Facebook and you see somebody's foot up there and you can hear the voice, they're going to turn it off. They're going to say, this is the devil. Because nobody will look at the bottom of nobody's feet, but you need right. your feet to walk. So we got some people who are foot soldiers, others who are part of the hand of helping you. Others who are the eyes to see what God is taking, the visionary. Others right. who are the ears who hear the prophetic word of the Lord and give it to the saints. So everybody in particular, others who got the nose to smell, everybody has a part to play. And when right. you try to make an ear, a mouth, or eyes, a nose, you're going to run into problems. And I think this is what should happen with the body. It's out of body. place, Joe. Yep. It's out of place. We got people who should have been evangelists. They ran and became pastors. You got people right. who should have been prophets. They ran and became pastors. You got people who should have been just teachers. They ran and became pastors. You got people who should have been doing various things. And all these people wanted to become a pastor like the pastor was the highest level of ministry. But what people don't understand, all fivefold ministry is equal. And it's one of the things that people don't get. I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll get into that. I say I got yeah, a whole yeah. you got you so got much a, to get into. Yeah. <laughs> you got a fivefold ministry, and God didn't sit none above each other, but he left certain men in charge because of their elders, like Peter was in charge because he was older and he right. was around Jesus a lot. But the way the ministry worked, it accommodated itself. It helps each other, it builds yeah. each other. It's an organism. Not, Not an organization. organization. Right. <laughs> right. And you know something? I want before we go forward, I want to say this. As far as uh, being a pastor or any a leader in the body of Christ, because it's the same thing, it's overseeing. You can't be a shepherd if you don't like the smell of sheep. Oh my God, no. Nah, can't do it, man. You know what I mean? Can't if you it. if you don't like if you can't deal with people. Dog, man. Forget it. Ministry, People period. Mi People ministry, period. Not People not just pastor, teacher, prophet, evangelist, apostle, any anything, yeah. anything in ministry. If you yeah. if you short tempered with people, yeah. if yeah. you if you have any inclination to, person. Right. If you have favoritism, uh yeah. you can't be in ministry because ministry is people. It is people. It is people. And God will always, as a minister, because of the anointing that's on your life, he gonna call you to work with the people who got the biggest problem. He don't right. want you guys. God don't need right. you guys. You got many types of birds. You got an eagle. You got ducks. You got um, chickens. You got pigeons. Peacock, and you got pigeons. Pigeons, you got to practically Kick them out the way to move out the way. And they always stay downtown where a bunch of noise is at. But then you got the dove that is white. The dove is a symbol of peace. It's not in a place where it's noisy. It's in a place of quietness where it's peace. Then you got the eagle that soar all the way up to the highest mountain. The eagle finds her mate in the air, not on right. the ground. And so what she does is grab a piece of stick that is the size of her baby, and she goes all the way up in the air when she releases it. If the male catches it, she know that's her mate. That's how an eagle picks her mate. And for the ladies out there, if he if he's not at your level spiritually, don't try to drag him. You're not designed to drag him. You're there to find somebody to be spiritually at your level because he will pull you down. And then you got dogs. All the ducks, they go north together, they go south together. Birds of a feather flock together. They're always together. And it ain't, I'm telling you, you, you want to have people together, but it's clickish. That's what duck is like, a clickish thing. Yep. You got your peacocks. They look so pretty. Oh, they look beautiful. But they just look pretty. You ever go to church and everybody just look real, real, real cute and handsome? But they ain't doing nothing. They just look pretty. So there are different types of birds and types of symbols of birds that symbolizes different type of characteristic that we would see in the body of Christ, man. It's strange when you see the things like that, Dr. Hey, 
Hey, yeah, listen, and also with leadership, the leaders cannot, cannot afford to get into any cliques. Remember, for, oh, and, yeah. and I'll, get into, I'll get into some characteristics. We'll start the characteristics of what biblical leadership uh, is. But Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, it hath been declared to me by them of Chloe's house that there be divisions among you. One say I'm of Apollos, the other say I'm oh. of Peter, one say I'm of Christ, one say I'm of Paul. Was Paul crucified for you? You know what I mean? They had their favorite. Yeah, you put it in order, brother. Right. They had their favorite preacher. They had their favorite this, their favorite that. And so leaders can't, we, you know, leaders have to follow Jesus Christ. That That's the main thing. And so let me kick this off now. And I'll say, I'm starting my notes here. And I'll say this, no matter what you read about leadership in the Bible, you will find that all of them reflect certain qualities that a leader should possess. Now, the first quality that a leader should possess, and we can talk about this for an hour, the first one, I'll throw this out there and I'll let you pick up from there and then we'll go down the line because I got a thousand of them. The first one is humility. Colossians 3 and 12, put on therefore as the elect of God, Colossians 3 and 12, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, and that's another uh, characteristics of, of, characteristic of a leader there, but we'll talk about that later. Bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness and long suffering. So the first one there, the first characteristic that I'll throw out there is humility, humbleness of mind. The Bible says that, that we should not think of ourselves more highly than we ought to, but let each esteem other higher than themselves. And Proverbs has a lot to talk about uh, humility. And if, if, if humility, if we're not led by the spirit of humility, which is one of the fruits of the spirit, the opposite of humility, we know what that is, pride. Pride. So, right. That's the opposite of humility. Everything has to be done in the spirit of humility. If it's not done in humility and done just purely out of zeal, out of knowledge, out of mm -hmm. wanting recognition, out of wanting to make ourselves look good, which is recognition, out of mm -hmm. wanting to make others feel bad, out of wanting to feel like our activity is our productivity. Activity is not productivity. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll talk about that a little, a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But if it's not done in the spirit of humility, and, and, and we'll talk about love in a minute. If it's not done in the spirit of humility, then it's done out of selfishness. It's done out of EGO. Remember Pastor Smith, EGO, mm -hmm. easing the ego, easing mm -hmm. God out, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pastor Smith used to say that all the time. So he says, humbleness of mind, the mind. Paul talks about the heart, not having a haughty mind, right? Mm -hmm. I remember, listen, I can remember vividly, man, when I first got saved mm -hmm. and God was filling me with his word, he was filling me with knowledge. I was around 20, 21, you know, between 21 and 25, looking back on it now, Mm -hmm. I was full of pride, man. Mm -hmm. I was puffed up. Like when I look, really look back on it, mm -hmm. I'm like, man, that was all pride. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know, you can't, you're a novice. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You yeah. really can't contain yeah. the, the anointing. That's why you have to be broken mm -hmm. to really exhibit who God in Christ is. You know, God has to break you down over the years. Uh, Adrian Rogers said this, God picks a man, gives him, gives him an impossible task, mm -hmm. crushes him, <laughs> then builds him back up. <laughs> <laughs> he takes a man or a woman, gives them an impossible task, crushes mm -hmm. them, then builds them back up, and then gives them the power to complete that task. And that's what Moses was, uh, what was it, 80 years? It was 40 years in Pharaoh's court, mm -hmm. 40 years in the backside of the desert, and 40 years wandering with the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And so Moses was raw when God yeah, was. called him. He was raw. You 
know what I mean? Yeah. Leadership is an ongoing process. This walk, this, this, this Christian call and this Christian life, it's an ongoing process. Yes, it is. But it starts. It starts. We're talking about characteristics of leadership. Colossians 3.12, it starts with humility, man. Yes. That, I, listen, yeah. man, I knew nothing. I knew nothing, and I'm still learning about humility. Mm -hmm. I'm still learning. God knows he has a way of sitting you down mm -hmm. in your mind, in your spirit, and sometimes in your body to get your mm -hmm. attention. God has a way because he wants everything to be done because we represent his son. Remember, his son, he was a man of many sorrows and acquainted mm -hmm. with grief. We, did esteem, we didn't esteem him, smitten of God. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? His visage was marred. The foxes of the field have holes, but the Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head. He was lied on, spit on, uh, a mock trial. He, he, Jesus Christ is, is, is the most humble. He, though he was God, Paul says, right? But he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. And that's what we have to get back to, servant leadership. Not serve me leadership. Servant leadership, not serve me leadership. Bless the man mm -hmm. of God and then God will bless you. Serve mm -hmm. me and then God will bless you. No. He says, uh, Peter, unless I wash your feet, you have no part in me. He said, in that case, Lord, wash not only my feet, wash everything. We have to get back to that servant leadership, that humble leadership where we are God's people's servants, right? We serve God first. That's where the relationship flows out of that. Mm. That's where leadership starts. Yeah. It starts with the Holy Spirit. Yes. It starts with the Holy Spirit. Colossians mm. 2, 6 and 7 says this, as ye have received therefore Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted built up in him, establishing the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. The, the abundance and the abounding comes from our relationship with God first, mm -hmm. not with ministry. Remember we talked about mm -hmm. Ephesus. They were in love with ministry, but not in love with God. In love with the benefits of ministry, but not in love with God. In love with the money, that ministry brings because let's be real it brings money paul talked about that shall not they that labor of the gospel eat of the gospel and so people abuse that they abuse that uh the popularity the fame you know what i mean lord lord the demons are subject to us because of your name he said don't rejoice because of that rejoice rather that your names are written in the land's book of life or you have eternal life there's a greater purpose and so in leadership if humility is not the first thing and the only thing the first thing and the only thing never be never ever uh exalt yourself above other people never mm -hmm. think more highly than yourself and that's e it, it, it sounds easy but we have to do that in in examples and we have to do that in instances because like i said looking back man i'm 45 years old now looking back man Mm -hmm. I, I, I still don't know what humility is, man. I still mm -hmm. don't. I, you can't mm -hmm. tell me I wasn't humble when I first got saved, but now looking back on it, I was full of pride. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. God give you a knowledge puffs up. I wasn't mm -hmm. ready to be nobody's leader. You know what I mean? You right, know, right. If you're walking in pride and, 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 and arrogance, you're not ready mm -hmm. to be nobody's leader. Go, I'll let you take it over there, uh, Pastor. No, that's, that's a good word, Ron. I think, and this is why we have trials in our lives. Things happen that we want God to remove it, but you got to be purged. And right. I think it's in the book of Jeremiah, he said, I've tried you, but not with gold, but through trials and tribulation. He bring trials in your life. It could come at the job. It could come in your family. It could come through your, uh, your peers or your friends. It could come through rejection. It might even come through infirmity, sickness. Right. But he allowed these things to happen to keep us humble, to trust right. in him. It could come through finances. Many various ways it can come. And uh, those things make us lean on the Lord even more. Because the more we trust in him, we realize we didn't get there on our own. 
Right. And sometimes people, one thing I, I never want to be proud of is what type of home I live in or the car I drive or the money I have. I don't want those things to be what I boast in. If there's anything I want to brag and boast in, I want to boast in the Lord. Amen. Look what I got. Because I'm not trying to draw people to my materialistic thing. Look what I got. Look what I'm worth. Look at who I am. Don't you right. know what my title is? Look what church I go to. Don't you know who I am? And some people, they give you their resume or who they are and their character before you can even know them. You met their degrees and everything else about them because they want you to know that they're important. But people who really love God, they won't even talk about their degree. You right. know what I mean? Right. They have a PhD or more than one degree. They won't even bring it up. You'll never know it. So I, I'm excited because I think what God wants is leadership. And leadership is a matter of the heart. It, it, it's, it's something about the heart. And it's an ongoing. You never arrive. You go through things. And God allow things to happen to you in that time. He'll let people separate themselves from you. Nobody want to be around you. And people might say, you'll never be nothing. And then God said, now that everybody has forsaken me, now I want to do something with you. That's when he began to work and deal and mend and equip this. He told Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house and look how he makes the potter and the clay. He said, this is what I want to do with you. I'm making you. I want to develop you into the image that I designed for you, not what you want to be. The Bible said there are many devices in the hearts of man. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord is just stand. So there are many devices, many things we want to do, but God said that ain't for you. We can waste 20 years trying to get to a position to be known. And God said, I'll let you go ahead and waste your 20 years. But when you do all that, I'm going to bring you right back. This is what I want you to do. Yeah. I've seen people go to school for one thing, but never use that degree and wind up becoming something else because that's what God designed for them. Always walk according to your purpose, Amen. not according to your wants. And so we got people who will brag on their accomplishment in this earth. Listen, if it ain't to the glory of God, it's going to burn up. It ain't nothing but wood, hay, and stubble. It's stubble. burning up wood. The fire is going to eat it up. So make sure anything you do, it is to the glory of God. And you won't be popular when you're following God. You better believe that. You will be Amen. rejected. It comes with the territory. Amen. So I guess one of the things that I, for me, Dr. Ryan, when it comes to leadership, I want to deal with who was the first leader, the first Amen. leader that we ever knew. And uh, that, that brings us to Adam. Because we don't know a lot about Adam. The only thing you know about Adam is for he this is called he messed bone. Up. Yeah, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Jeremy. And then the next thing you said messed up. Yeah, that's he messed up. That's all we know about Adam. And then the next thing you hear about the woman that thou givest me. <laughs> so other than that, you don't hear nothing else from Adam. But it's a lot of things that Adam knew. Adam was his name means man. Okay, that's what his name means. And he was God created son. Amen. So I sometimes I talk to people, I say, Don't you know God had four sons? They said, Four sons. Oh, you don't mess it up now, Calvin. Four? Yes. Adam was God created son. Right. Israel was God's spiritual son. He told Pharaoh, I'm not gonna release your son until you release my son. Uh we are God adopted son because we've been adopted into the family of God. And That's Jesus good. is God only begotten son. So it's the right. four sons of God. You know how it is, Dr. Mm -hmm. Rod. Yeah. But, um, Adam, Luke Luke says yeah. it about Adam. Huh? When Luke gives the when Luke gives the genealogy all the way from yeah. yep. uh Adam the Christ, he, he ends yes, it he and he says, With Adam, who was the son of God. Yep. That's what it says. If you ever read that, it goes all the yeah. way back. And then it says, and he began and Adam, he begot Adam, which was the created son of God. It talks right. about Adam. Yeah. Adam and God was close, but people don't realize because Adam he wasn't a little boy. He wasn't a baby. He was created as a man. He right. doesn't know what it's like to be a little kid. So he comes in this world created by God. When he opened his eyes, the first thing you see is God looking at him. He's talking to him. And he began to explain to him what he is. Um, 
So God said, let us make man in our own image and let them have dominion over the earth. That's the first man that had a position as a leader. Give them dominion. And if you want to, we can go to the book of Genesis chapter, um, I think it's chapter two, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, chapter I'm two. I'm sorry, chapter one. Chapter one, verse 26. Oh, yeah. Let, yeah. Let, let, us, let us create one, man. 26. That's right. That's right. Yes. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, us, y'all, and let them have dominion over the fish of the seas and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over the, all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the first earth. Dominion. He has control. This is the first leader, everything. But I want you guys to know, God said, let us. Now, it's three times in the Bible you will see that word us. Three times. You see it in Genesis, he said us. The first chapter and the second chapter. And then you will see it in Genesis chapter 11. He said the people has become one. And whatever they put their mind to do, nothing should be restrained to from them. Come to let us go down. And then the third time you see him say us is in Isaiah chapter 6. He said, whom shall I send, and who will go for us? us? And Isaiah said, here am I, O Lord, send me. So you notice it's a trinity. Let us, let us, let us. And so when people say, oh, he knows there's three God. Well, he keeps saying, let us. He's not talking about angels. He's not talking about angels. He's talking about Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Let us. And the Bible saying these three are one. So Adam is the first man that was a leader. He had dominion over the whole earth. He was the leader of planet Earth. How did he got it? God gave him the keys, the title, the deed. But he allowed the devil to take over. Right. And he became the principality of the air. And Jesus said, the prince of this world comes and he has nothing to do. And right. you might remember when Satan tempted Jesus, he said, all these nations will I give unto you if you bow down and worship me, for it was delivered unto me. That's right. What is he saying? I got it from Adam. That's and right. Jesus knew how he got it. That's why Jesus came to give it back to the Adam, the sons of Adam. The he last Adam. Adam. Jesus is the last Adam. Yeah, he's the second Adam and the last Adam. That's right. So the first man who had a title and a position was Adam. He was created. Sometimes you ask the question, are leaders born or are they made? Both is right. Some are born and some are made. That's right. And made is through a process of time. You will read that God told certain prophets to tell them this leader is going to be born at a certain time. Christ was one. If the prophet, prophetic word was about Christ at one time. Josiah the king was another. Prophetic word about Josiah the king. When the king went to prophesy to the altar. That's right. He said there'd be a man coming named Josiah the king. Uh, so you will see at time that God would do things. He would raise up leaders at times, good leaders and bad leaders. He told Israel, I'm going to rise up. I think it was in Ezekiel. I'm going to rise up my servant, Nebuchadnezzar, he called him. Yeah. Really, it's Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. He spoke about him before he came. So Cyrus it took time when God brought leaders. Men and women, y'all. That's right. Yeah, it is time we brought it. Deborah. Did you want to say, Dr. Ryan? No, I was about to say Deborah, too. Speak. Deborah was yes. a yes, yeah, a powerful oh, woman of God. But to your point about Adam, now he was created perfect. He had free will, mm -hmm. but the fact that he 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 fell, and we, even though we're born again, and mm -hmm. we have this Adamic nature, this fallen sin nature. The fact that we don't lead with humility is a clear uh, is correlation with the fact that we're in this fallen nature. Yes. We, are, we are subject to pride, arrogance, yes. arguing, fighting, bickering. That's why the Bible says that those that are Christ have crucified the flesh mm -hmm. with the lust thereof. And you mentioned earlier about uh, not being, not wanting to be known for, you know, what kind of house you have, what kind of mm -hmm. car you have, you know, your position in the body of Christ. And it's nothing wrong with having those things. Right, you know right. I mean? But Paul, but Paul says, 
Paul says that <laughs> you don't want to be known for that. Paul says, Paul says that a thorn in the flesh was given to me, lest I be exalted above mm -hmm. measure. And like mm -hmm. you said, you know, a lot of time God allows things in our lives to keep us humble. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul, all of the revelation that he had, oh you know, he, he went into the third heavens. You know, yeah, brother. He wrote two thirds of the New Testament. He is the apostle to the Gentiles. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Yep. And, and, yes, and Paul was. says, you know, a messenger of Satan was given to me, a thorn in the flesh to buffet mm -hmm. me, lest I be exalted above measure. You know what I mean? He, he came to the conclusion that mm -hmm. that thing was in his life to keep him humble. And, and yes. he, saw, he said, he also said he sought the Lord three times to remove it. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and God says, uh, my, my grace is grace. sufficient. <laughs> yeah, I ain't moving this thing, Paul. You know what I mean? He <laughs> says, God said, I ain't removing it. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. And Paul says, therefore, I will uh, boast in my tribulations or my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And so true leadership is walking in the power of Christ and the humility of Christ. Anything outside of that is Satan. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Seven out wills of Satan. You know what I mean? And so Satan puts the tension on himself. True leadership, you want true joy? It's Jesus, others than you. J-O-Y, that's true joy. And so mm -hmm. humility is the first characteristic of leadership. The second one I have here is compassion. Mm -hmm. And it comes from that same verse, Colossians 3 and 12. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, that's compassion, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. And so if you, if you don't have, you know, people shouldn't come into our churches and into our homes and into the presence of God, because that's who we represent. That's what the tabernacle mm -hmm. is. The church is, you know, we are the body of Christ. People shouldn't come into our assembly and be greeted with meanness. Yeah. You, know, you got a nasty attitude. You shouldn't be an usher. Yeah. <laughs> you can't be an usher. You can't be a, yeah. <laughs> You can't be snapping out on people if you're an usher. You know what I mean? You got to be the politest, loving, caring, kind. Because people come into our assemblies with baggage. You know what I mean? People mm -hmm. got issues. They got pains. We came mm -hmm. in with pain. We came in hurting. We came in with bondages. You know what I mean? That's right. And, and, and you know, that's that also falls on leadership, too. You know, I, if I, I know, I know a person. Just because they're a family member, I shouldn't make them an usher, but I know they got a, a short temper. You know oh, I mean? yeah, yeah. yeah. You know how that goes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, compassion. Can't run it like a business. Yeah, yeah. If you if you don't have compassion for people, man, I mean, talking about, I'm not just talking about being an usher. I'm talking about preaching the gospel, too. You know what I mean? On the streets, uh, passing out tracts at the job, if you're preaching the gospel, whatever you're doing, you know, Compa humility and compassion is at the core of this thing. This mm -hmm. is the this is the heart of the man. This is the heart of God, the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the God that sent his son to die on, die on the cross for us while we were his enemies. So if God did that for me while I was his enemy, what am I supposed to do for the unsaved and the saved? You know what I mean? I'm supposed to deal with people. He says, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Right? Mm -hmm. that, that's how God draws us, with loving kindness. You know what I mean? Now, afterwards, when we get stiff-necked and stubborn, you know, he deals with his kids like a father whom his son he loved. He corrects him. You know what I mean? That's that's different there. But when, he, when you talk about initial salvation and, and initially winning people to Christ, we deal with these people with... Uh, Humility and compassion. Mm. I want to read something real quick to some of our friends out there of mm. some of the principles of a leader. Okay. And it's very important. Just want to give you some nuggets here. Here's one part. Character. 
be a piece of the rock. That's the first one. Second one, charisma. The first impression can seal the deal. Mm -hmm. Third, commitment. It separates doers from dreamers. Four, communications. Without it, you travel alone. Five, competence. If you build it, they will come. Six, courage. One person with courage is a majority. Right. Seven, discernment. Put an end to unsolved mystery. Number eight, focus. The sharper it is, the sharper you are. Nine, generosity. Your candle loses nothing when it lights another. Let me say that again. Your candle, generosity, loses nothing when it lights another. In other words, impacting other people. Hey, also, Kevin, before you go any further, that proverb that you always quote when you talk about a candle, it says that the spirit of the man yes. is, the lamp, is the lamp of the Lord. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When his spirit illuminates our spirit, we become yes. his light. That's the light of the world. A born again mm -hmm. spirit is the light. You are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Afterwards, and we 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 are to take that light to people, but you have to do it in the spirit of Christ. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. Generosity, I want to say that again. It's say your candle loses nothing when it lights another. Many of you know what it's like to have a candle. You light other candles, you light other candles. One candle can light a million candles, one at a time. It could just light them up. In other words, you can have an impact on somebody's life and bring such a light in their life. Another man's gain or woman gain is not your loss. Too many times we look at other people's gain as our loss. Or maybe right. doing so well, and we feel like as though we insignificant. Their gain is not your loss. It has nothing to do with you. You can have the same thing they got or do what they do. But never be insecure to the point you are jealous of someone else's success. You should be excited and throw a party for them and celebrate them. Amen. Because when your time comes, and it will come, they're going to celebrate your time. But if you don't celebrate other people's success, I promise you, when your time comes, nobody's going to celebrate your success. So those are the things. And that, just the last one that I want to say was initiative. You won't leave home without it. So it needs a certain principles and characteristics. But you said something that was very important was compassion. And sometimes it it it, it takes a lot to be right. compassionate because things happen and you want to be long suffering towards people, but compassion goes a long way. And it doesn't take anything to have compassion. As a human being, we got to be compassionate on one another. And it takes time in some cases with some people. But because a lot of things happen, you don't know how people were brought up in different things. But the compassion plays a big part of it. And I, I never want to be to a place that now that I've gotten here, I don't care what nobody else do. And everybody got to get it themselves. Come on. Right. You can't, you can't think like that because you got there because somebody opened the door for you. Everybody got where they at because someone else. And you will hear arrogance and people this out. You did some of my own. Yeah, you did that. But I was the one that, no, 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 no. Nobody gets nowhere without someone else's help. Right. <laughs> because if someone didn't give you the opportunity, you never got there. Everybody needs someone else because That's we're right. all connected in some type of way. You better believe you're connected with someone else. Amen. So I, I just want to share anything you have, my brother. I want to go to the next one. Okay. So we just did uh, humility. It was a thousand traits to biblical leadership. We're talking about biblical leadership. We're not talking about the world standard. No. Nah. You know what I mean? Because the world standard, all you need is power. But yes. the world standard is just about power. And you know what that is? Money. Yeah. yeah. You got a lot of money. If you got a lot oh, of money, no matter the world standard, you can be a good oh, leader. Yeah. You're a good leader. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? That's power. You could be the, the, world. the most you know, ignorant man in the world, but you got money. That's right. And, and the Bible. <laughs> a fool in his riches. 
And, and talk about food in the bitches, but everybody and, you, you, and everybody in the whole room know that this man is crazy and he's a fool, but because he got money, they right. use something that it's a word called compromise. Now, the Bible do say money is a defense and wisdom is a defense, but the excellency of wisdom is that the wisdom gives life. And it talks about that in the book of Ecclesiastes. Because money is a defense. It is. The Bible said money answers all things. But it also tells us that wisdom is a defense also. But the excellency of wisdom is that wisdom gives life. And you never want to, because somebody have money, and you know this person ain't in their right mind. I'd rather have a man that is poor, but got good God-given ability with wisdom and understanding to make the right choices, than to have a man that's worth $10 billion or $200 billion, and they are fool. And you better believe, when you honor a fool, you're going to have some big problems. I'm telling you now. The Bible warns us about honor and fool. We are never supposed to honor a fool at all. God's word tells us that. Because it said, if you honor a fool, it's like thorns going up inside your hand. And folks, if you ever got hit with a thorn in your hand, it hurts. It is a torturing feeling. And that's what it's like when you honor a fool. You can't, it, God tell us don't even follow a fool. The Bible says he that walk with fools, he that walk with wise men shall be wise. But a companion, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Fool, they all going to be destroyed. And if the blind lead the blind, you know what happens, right? Amen, brother. Yeah, so again, we're talking about biblical leadership. We're Christians. Yeah. And that's our model. This is our model right here. And you can't co-sign a leader and call him a man of God if they're not portraying the fruits of the spirit. Yes. That's the fruits of the spirit. That means the results of having the spirit, the results of a relationship with God. And so I want to, before I go to our, our next one, we already dealt with humility, compassion. I'll deal with the third one. But I want to build this little picture here. You guys can uh, kind of use your imagination. So with leaders here, the first, uh, the foundation is a growing relationship with God. Yes. That's that Colossians 2, 6, and 7. And out of that relationship with God, the foundation flows out of that. Paul says abounding therein, then that's where the character comes from. Be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children, the character. So you got the foundation, a relationship with God. Out of mm -hmm. that comes a character. And then once the character has been established, the character of Jesus Christ imitating God, and then out of that flows the calling for we as workmanship created in Christ Jesus, right? And then once that calling has been established that flows out of everything else, then we can impact the community. If you skip any of those stages, you're going to damage the community. If you skip any of those stages, you're going to damage the community, right? And then out of that flows what Jesus Christ's example was of a team. That's what Jesus Christ had. He had a team. He showed them how to operate as a team. And the last thing out of all that, then comes the skill. So we got it all twisted. All you need is skill now and then. You don't need character. You don't need a relationship with God. You don't need to have a team mindset. All you need is zeal and a little skill and a little word, and you're good to go. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so that, that's a wildfire. That's why a lot of people get burnt and hurt by, by Christians because they're wildfire. They, they're not built up right in the faith. They just got a little skill, a little zeal, a little fire. And so we talked last week, before I go to this third one, God has been uh, dealing with us on rest, uh, yes. my wife and I, and we heard today from a friend of ours that rest is a weapon, right? So you mm -hmm. have Elijah that was in conflict with the devil, Jezebel. He had an external conflict with Satan. That's what it was. He had an external conflict with Satan that affected him in internally. And so he runs from her and he, you know, basically collapses. He has this conversation with God and says, Lord, now under the juniper tree, take my life away. 
right? Because he was exhausted from his conflict with the devil. And the angel comes down and bakes him one cake, right? First, he taps him and says, wake up from his exhaustion, from conflict, from spiritual warfare, from trial, from tribulation. He's exhausted. That wasn't, it wasn't proper rest. He was just exhausted. He dropped out. So if he was getting proper rest, the angel would have never woke him up and said, eat the cake. So he woke him up and he says, eat the cake. He saw a cake that was baking in a cruise of war. And after he ate that food, he went to sleep. He didn't get his proper rest. That was the rest for his soul. You know what I mean? The soul's rest. If you, if you ain't leaving nobody if your soul is not resting in God. You're not portraying who Christ is if you don't have a rest in your soul. That's what Elijah needed. And then he woke him up again. After he got the rest, he woke him up again and he baked another cake with another cruise of uh, oil or water. He says, uh, rise and eat for the journey is too far for you. Right? That's life's journey. So first, we need rest for our souls. We need to take in the word to rest first. And then we need to eat the word for the journey. Life's journey is too much. I don't care what nobody says. It's too much. Save the unsaved. It's too much. And so this is the manna that we need right here for the journey. And the Bible says that he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights. He went down to Horeb, and then he went back up to anoint Elisha. But rest for our souls. We have to use rest as a weapon. You know what I mean? Ripping and running, all that, that, that'll tire you out. And if you got to rest first, if you got to rest first, and then you eat again, he says, eat again, for the journey is too much for you. So you get two cakes there. One cake for the rest after you collapse from life trials, and then another mm -hmm. cake for the journey. So let me get back onto this thing here. Uh, the third one here is found in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 through 17. So the first one was humility, the yes. second one, compassion, and yes. the third one is empathy. Uh, good leaders, good you one, have man. to have empathy for people, man. People mess up. People have yeah. been crushed, they've been hurt, they've been abused, yeah. they've been molested, they've been raped, they've been all they've been on drugs, they've been poured down, they had strongholds of generation after generation. Their great 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 grandparents was in the same stronghold that they was in. And they come into our assemblies and we expect them to instantly get it just like that. Well, it don't work like that for everybody. No, it don't. It don't, it don't work like that for everybody. Some people get delivered instantly. Some people... It's a process. It's a process. So Hebrews 4 and 15 through 17 says this. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. You know, he, he's, he's been through everything that we, we went through. And Jesus Christ, he took on human flesh and he knows what it like, what it's like to be human. So when we in leadership get to the point where we forget what it's like to fall, when you forget what it's like to fail, when you forget what it's like to backslide, when you forget what it's like to struggle with sin, when you forget what it's like to fail God, when you forget all of that stuff and you just preaching and you forget that all the stuff that God brought you through, God didn't kill you when you was fornicating. God didn't kill you after you got saved and fornicated. God didn't kill you after you got saved and cheated on your wife. God didn't kill you after you got saved and back backslid. So you, you have to not forget those moments when you're dealing with humans. You mm -hmm. have to. It's not that you're condoning sin. You're not condoning mm -hmm. sin. You're working with the person. Now, also, God will with some people, God will tell you, all right, you know, move on. You know, you counsel that person enough. They're just stubborn. Now, God, that does happen. But what I'm saying is we have to be empathetic with people when they're coming into the body, when they're struggling with things, when they're in bondages, when they're weak. Paul says this in, in First Thessalonians, I believe, uh, comfort the feeble-minded, 
support the weak, warn them that are unruly, and be patient toward all men. That's the four things he said to do as far as leadership is concerned when you're dealing with humans. Mm -hmm. Support the feeble-minded. You got weak-minded people among us. Save them. Save people. They, their yeah. minds are weak. They've, they've been beat down. They've been torn down. It takes some time to build people up. You know what I mean? That's what good leaders do. They comfort the feeble-minded. Yeah. You know what I mean? They comfort them. They don't condemn them. They don't give up on them. They don't preach on them. They don't talk behind their backs. They don't, yeah. you know what I mean, whisper about them. They don't gossip about them. They comfort the feeble-minded. You know yeah. what I mean? And they warn them that are unruly, the people that's mm -hmm. doing stuff purposely. You know what I mean? They're not struggling with sin. they just unruly. You warn them. But he says, be patient to all men. So he says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our firmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Right? He knows what we're going through down here. He overcame the world. So because we have this kind of high priest, right? Because we know that Jesus Christ been through what we've been through, yet without sin. So he knows the pressure that the world can bring, right? Because we have that kind of high priest. That's the high, that's the kind of high priest we have. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find help in time of need. So God is not going to cast me off in my weak moment. Humans will. God is not going to cast me off when I fall. Humans will. I don't have that kind of high priest that's going to cast me off. I have that kind of high priest that can relate to me, that's been in my shoes. And since I have that kind of high priest, oh, oh, he knows what I've been through. Paul says that you have that kind of high priest, come boldly to the throne of grace. That's why you can't talk to some people. You can't go to them boldly because they, as soon as you tell them you messed up, it's over with. She ain't no woman of God. He ain't no, you can't go to them boldly. You know what I mean? You got to be hesitant about who you talk to because they use it against you. Yeah. Grace is the only one you can go boldly to because we have, he's a different kind of person. He's a different kind of high priest. Go ahead, let me let you go ahead because I'll keep talking. Man. I'm sorry. Um, One of the things that I like what came back to me when he was talking was the leader comes and he lays down the right principle when he starts off because he wants people to know what his mission statement is all about. Jesus comes in the book of Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 and he teaches you what his doctrine is. His doctrine. Now doctrine is not bad. When people hear the word doctrine they think something is wrong. You got good doctrine and you got bad doctrine. The doctrine that Jesus taught was from five, uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. So it would be no mistake, his doctrine was not like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They would not shake your hand if you wasn't right. You That's stick your right. hand out there if you want to, they look at you like you had the coronavirus. They That's ain't right. shaking your hand. And you stick your hand out there for. But Jesus, when he came, he laid down the principles of love, long suffering, temperance, meekness, patience. He wanted people to know. And another character, which was the book of Job, chapter 29. Let's look at Job, chapter 29. It came back to my mind, but what type of man was Job? Job was a, he was a, a, a man that cared about people. Amen. He was compassionate, long-suffering. And this is why he couldn't understand why this was happening to him. He did what, what was required of him. And it was one verse that said about Job, uh, chapter what, 29, moreover Job continued his parable and said, oh, that I was as in mouth pass, right. as in the days when God preserved me, and when by his light I walked through the darkness, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. Verse 5, when the Almighty was yet with me, and when and when my children were about me, when I washed my step with butter and the rock poured me out, rivers of oil, when I went out to the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the, seat, in the street, the young men saw me and hid themselves, and the agent arose and stood up with the thing of honor. The princes refrained from talking 
and laid their hands upon their mouths. The nobles held their peace, and their tongues cleaved to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard me, then it blessed me. And when the eyes saw me, it gave witness to me. And this is why people honor Job. Verse 12, because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none to help him. The book of James talks about what pure religion is all about. Not in the garment, not in the title, not in the gift, not in the ability. Pure religion, not about how much we know about the word. James said pure religion and undefiledness is to visit the widows and the fatherless in their distress and to keep himself unspotted from this world. That's pure religion. It's about visiting the widows and the fatherless. Because those are the two people that always is forgotten in the church. The widows, their husband died. People forget about the widows, the mothers. The children who don't have fathers. Sometimes we see ladies that got children with no daddy around. James said these are the people we need to show more attention to those people. And be there for them. Because those kids need father figures in their lives. The widows need men in their lives too to be there to support as a support cast for them. So Job said, because he delivered the poor that cried in verse 12 and the fatherless and him that had none to help him, the blessed of him that was ready to perish came upon me and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness and it clothed me and my judgment was as a robe and a diadem. So Job was there as a support cast for the people. So he did what God told him. He loved his neighbor as he loved himself. Some people love themselves more than they love their neighbor, but that's another story. <laughs> but when you love your neighbor as you love yourself, you will be able to get a lot more work done, I'm telling you. Because it, it's something about if you know what it's like not to have or you didn't you needed something, and you was hungry. And when you see somebody else is hungry, then you know how to meet that need because you remember when you was in that diverse need. Amen. So that was the compassionate part that we got to remember. But these are the leadership that we need in this time because this is a great opportunity that God has given the church to step up into, to be there for the people. And yeah, we want to meet every need. He never wanted us to pick and choose who we want to help. That ain't our choice. Well, I like him, so I give him 10000 I don't like him. You can starve to death. I feel less about him. That's not compassion. Too often people talk about love, but love is an action. They want you to love because if you got a bad attitude, oh, you ain't got no love. But when you're hungry, they ain't helping you. But they telling you, you ain't got no love. Right. Love is an action, man. Yeah. Maybe the man is mad because there ain't nobody helping him. But you ever thought about that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Love is an action. You're so Amen. mean and mean, you ain't got no love. Well, maybe if you help the brother more, he'll have more love. People, <laughs> a friend of mine posted something up on his billboard outside. And he said, a blind man can see love, and a deaf man can hear it. Did you hear what I said? A blind man can see love, and a deaf man can hear it. Now, that's it's like a parable that he's saying when he says that. But what he's telling you is that people respond to action, y'all, to action. What good is it if I only give gifts to those that I like and they're my friends, and people that I don't care about, I don't help them? I'm going to come and say, I'm going to bless you, Bishop, with twenty thousand dollars, I got people in my church who may lose their house or can may get evicted. But never mind for them. I'm just gonna bless you, Bishop. No, we got help those people that need help. The bishop will be all right. He got a nice car. It's paid off. He got a nice home. He live in large. He got plenty of money in the bank. Go take that money and give it to somebody that needs it. We don't want to be those who get a cold cup of water and go to the ocean and pour it in the ocean. The ocean doesn't need the water. Take that bottle of water to the desert where they are thirsty at. And now you're making a difference. Amen. Don't take the candle to the broad daylight in the sun. Take the candle in the dark part of the wilderness and bring light there. And that's where it's needed at. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That That's awesome, uh, Pastor Meyer. So that's our third point. So we dealt with humility, compassion, and empathy. And I'll, I'll finish it off with this. We'll do part two next week. But the last one, number four, is so that, that that's we're talking about biblical leadership for those of you that are just getting on. So biblical leadership is humility. Mm hmm. First, it is compassionate, it is empathetic, it understands what people go through, and it, it shows it shows action too, like you said. Mm -hmm. And also the last one is it stands for righteousness. Mm -hmm. You can't be a biblical leader and compromising with the world. No, you can't. You know, you, you, you can't. We are we are in the last days. And we, we are studying the, studying the book of Revelation, too, where it's talking about those churches that are compromising with the world just, yeah. to win, just to win the world and just to be like the world and just to avoid persecution. But I want to read this proverb, proverb 29 and 2. It says this, and we're talking about righteousness and leadership, yes. not greedy not backbiting, <laughs> not tearing people down, yeah. not prideful, yes. not afraid of other people growing. We'll get into that later on. Yeah. We, we, we want to talk about uh, insecurities and leadership. So yes. he or she stands for righteousness. Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people mm -hmm. rejoice. Yes. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. They you mourn. I mean? They mourn. When, when you got wicked people and authority, people don't want to be under that. They want they want example. They want somebody that they can uh trust. They want somebody oh, that, right. They, they want somebody that can comfort them. They want somebody that can relate to them. They want somebody yeah. that can give them a, a comforting word in tough times like this. So the scripture says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice because they know they know God is going to show up for that person. They know regardless of how tough it gets, they know that that person. And, that, and let me talk about John the Baptist real quick. Mm. Let me talk about him real quick because he just came to mind when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. So a lot of times people will tell you that how are you going to tell somebody about God blessing you and you don't have this and you don't have that and you don't have this? Mm -hmm. uh, material blessings is not a barometer for God's no. presence. It's not Never a barometer for truth. We have it the Never. wrong way. So John the Baptist was a righteous man because he followed God's spirit and he followed God's ways, right? Mm -hmm. Now, and he walked by faith and not by sight now. So John the Baptist had no entourage, no authenticating miracles, nope. no nope. big white horse, no, no. palace, nah. no fancy clothes. He <laughs> said, those that are in king's courts wear fine raiment. <laughs> right? Yeah. So John the Baptist uh -huh. had his, his clothes with uh, camel hair, and he ate locusts and wild honey. But the Bible says, now this plain man, mm. this plain man, and yet his ministry that God had given him was so successful, the Bible says, yeah. and yet went out him, went, went out to him all Judea and the region round about joy to be baptized, yeah. confessing their sins. Yes, sir. So it's not that the tangible things that he had. It's the mm. authenticity that people saw. Yes. But leadership yes. have leadership have twisted it to make us believe that in order to bring people in, you got to show them how up. prosperous we are. Yeah, got. you got to show them how prosperous you are. You got to get a smoke machine. You got to eat a coffee machine. You got to cater to the millennials. You got to do this. You got to do that. You gotta, you're not winning souls. You just have a packed church. You don't have a healthy church. John the Baptist had a healthy ministry because they came to him confessing their sins. Mm. They're not coming to our churches confessing their sins and repenting of their sins. 
They coming in there because it's comfortable in there to live in sin. John the Baptist had nothing, man. He lived, the Bible mm. says that he was in the desert until his wow. manifestation unto Israel, to the, day, to the day of his manifestation to Israel. But yet went out to him all Judea and the region round about Jordan to be baptized of him. Why? Why would they follow this man? Why would they come to his baptism? Because they saw authenticity and they saw righteousness. I'm going to let you close out, brother. Enter. I mm. want to invite people to Christ. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say, Ron, I, I like everything that you said about it because a lot of times when we look at leadership, we think the leader got to First of all, the only thing the leader got to be is genuine. If they are genuine and they, they love, they're concerned about people. And it's a process. Uh, like David, he just mentioned about it. What was the place he, he said, oh, if I had a drink from the river of so-and-so, the water he wanted to drink, and the men, do you remember the name of it? They broke through the Philistine, got the water, dipped yeah, the men. Yeah, I know, I know exactly. David, It'll come. I know what you're talking about. he looked at the men... And he couldn't drink the water. Yeah. He poured it out. He said, how can I drink this water? People had to die to go get this water. That is the compassion of the leader. They heard David say, he didn't say, go get me water from there. He was just thinking out loud. Oh, I wish I could drink from that, that river again that got that good cold water. And the men went and got the water. Yeah. Him, he was their leader, their king. Brother, let me tell you something. When you do things right and people know you got their back, they will bend over backwards for you and risk their lives and take you to where you need to be at. But if they see that you all for yourself, then sit back and watch you because they don't know who you are. They say, is he doing this for us or is he doing it for himself? Because one thing I learned about leadership it deals with all kind of different conditions of life. It doesn't matter how sloppy it may be or messy it is. Because when you squeeze that leader, what's in him going to come out of it? If he's an orange, orange juice going to come out of him. If he's an apple, apple juice is going to come out of him. If he... <laughs> Don't make me laugh, Dr. Ryan. You make me laugh. If he's a lemon, lemon juice is going to come out of him. When the pressure is on, you will find out who your leader is. Yeah. I'm telling you, my brother. And believe you me, if you are placed in leadership, and if you're not called to be there, the weight of it will crush you because it will be too much for you to bear. And we understand the word of God say, he will not put on us more than what we can what? Bear. Amen. So he allowed things to happen in our lifetime. And you can't pick and choose what trial you want and what you don't want. No, he gonna bring all kinds of trials your way because he wanna show people that you know how to be a base when it's time to be a base. You know when it's time to step up. When hard times come, leaders don't hide themselves. Oh, they don't go in the cave and hide themselves. That's the time they come to the forefront. Right. You see, this is the time when the rubber meets the road, when you put your money where your mouth is at. The real one, the bigger the mess is, the stronger the leader looks in front of the people. He don't have all the answers. He can't solve all the problems, but he'll be right there with you in the problem. He will listen to you. If you want the people heart, Hear what the people are saying. The leader is not a dictator. You just do as I say, do. That, that's not leadership. Leadership, listen to the ears. He gives his ear to the people and hear what they're saying. Because once you put yourself in the leadership, listen, we in 2020, there are no kings. All the kings is in the Old Testament. We in the New Testament now. So if anybody thinks I'm a king, you are ego tripping, brother. You're ego tripping. There is no king in this New Testament. There are fivefold ministries, and every part of that ministry is very important. And when you shut down different ministries, you are hurting the body of Christ. Amen. To the point that God said, I got to take you home because you are hindering my sons and daughters from coming forth because you want a pyramid. God don't have no pyramid. The ministry is an organism, not an organization. And when God moves us, when he's moving the body of Christ, Hallelujah. 
is to corporate anointing. He wants us to have a corporate oh, anointing. That's right. And with corporate anointing, much can get done. In the book of Acts, you saw a corporate anointing, and they was on one accord. They had a leader, but they was all underneath the umbrella of a corporate anointing. Oh, there are, yes, sir. There are certain animals that know how to work as a corporate, and they do it real good. Creatures. These creatures are locusts. They wait for a strong wind. When the wind comes, they can't fly that far, but they would jump in the wind and let that wind navigate them for miles away and fly because they wait for the right wind. We as believers in corporate anointing got to wait for the wind of the Spirit of God. When he would lead us, we would take off and go wherever God wants us to go, wherever he want to lead us at, whatever he want to do in our life, it's all right with us. The other type of thing is what you will have is what we call birds. You got birds like the ducks. They go up east when it's summer. When it gets cold, they go back down west. They go back down south. The other thing you got is ants. Ants will work together relentlessly. That's Nobody right. trying to be the chief over there. Hey, right? listen. Yes, sir. I'm going to let you finish. Uh -huh. the prob I'm going to finish talking about the ant, but the proverb says, Behold the ant, thou slugger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they store up when it's summertime. Take the little ants carrying big old potato chips. They all get together, take it down, and they hide it. They work together relentlessly, and they work together. And they get it. They're not jealous of each other. They're not like crabs in a barrel. I told you, crabs in a barrel is a dangerous thing. Crabs in a barrel, when you get a barrel of crab and you're going to boil a crab, you know, we colored folks love crabs in the summertime. When you pull them out, you got three or four of them holding on to each other's arm and legs. You ain't going without me. I'm going with you. And not knowing everybody going to the boiler. They're going to the boiler. The big old pot of water, hot boiling water. They're all going in the boiler. So what you want to do is they pulling each other's arms and legs off. We don't want to think like that. We want to be like the ants, the locusts. The ants know when to store up, the birds. And the other one is wolf pack. Now, wolf pack, they stay together. Yeah. They come with a strategy, and they run together. They hang with each other, and they're observing everything. But you got animals who understand the concept of teamwork. If the people of God ever get it, and let me say this, in the book of Genesis chapter 11, they didn't have no Holy Ghost. It was the Holy Ghost. It was the will of man. There are some things you don't need the Holy Ghost to do. You already got it within your DNA to do it. God said the people have become one. And whatever they put their mind to do, this is in the Tower of Babel, nothing should be restrained from them. Come to let us go down and confound their language. So when everybody said, we get the Holy Ghost, we can work together. Folks, let me tell you something. If you are willing to humble yourself, and work as a team without showing partiality, without being favoritism. Oh, we like what you said, but what you said, we don't want to hear nothing you got to say. This is what respect of a person is. What this person says is important, but what you said ain't important because we don't like you. Don't kill the messenger, y'all. Sometimes people, you may not care for the person, but if they telling you the truth, Amen. you better believe it's the truth. Amen. But we don't like him because of this and so and so what we heard about him we cannot be like that we gotta be fair but i just want to shut it down and just say this if you haven't given up all to follow jesus christ as your lord and savior this is the time right now that you can surrender all or maybe you backslide maybe you left the lord maybe you broke covenant with Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. maybe something happened in your life that you became bitter or Whatever it could be, it's not always drinking or drugs or illicit sex. It could be something in your spirit. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe you, from what we've seen, what happened with George Floyd, it got you bitter with other race and ethnicity. God wants us to forgive. We don't forget, but we understand we must forgive. And we got to forgive others in order for all sins to be forgiven. Yes. And so God said, if we don't forgive men their transgression, neither will he forgive us when we transgress yes. against him. I want you to just give your heart to the Lord and come straight before God. And whatever it might be, this is the time of reckoning. 
This is a time of reconciliation. This is a time when you can bring it to the Lord. For if we confess our sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, the Bible tells us. The Bible said that God is faithful and just. There's nothing you can do that won't make God sin because of that sin is greater than that sin. Sin is sin, dog. And with that being said, if you hear me underneath the sound of my voice, just repeat after me. Say, oh God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Wash me and cleanse me in the blood of the Lamb. Create in me a clean heart. Renew within me the right spirit and write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Holy Spirit, Come into my heart and become Lord and Master and Savior of my life. This day, I ask it in Jesus' name and to his glory. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, for all those who said that, for those who will see the video later on, or seeing it afresh, God, we pray that yes. your word would go and take strong, solid roots yeah. inside of it. God, let it bring forth some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. Move by your spirit. God, tear down strongholds and principalities. Break generational curses. God, remind them that they've been bought with a price. They belong to you now. Let no weapon form against them shall prosper. Be their stronghold, their high tower. Let it be a safety place in you. Let them know that Psalm 91 belongs to them, God. Lord, you said in yes. Psalm 90, verse 12, God, you've been our dwelling places in all generations. In Psalm 90, verse 1, before the mountain was brought forth, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. God, move by your spirit. Open doors and opportunity. Bless them, Father, with Proverbs 8, 12, the mind of the witty invention, God. In the name of Jesus, for it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. Your spirit search all things, the deep things of God. God, break chains and shuckles and things that set on their mind and make them think that they're not worthy when they are worthy. For this came you into the world that you might destroy the works of the devil. In the name of Jesus. In the name of power, Jesus. By your spirit. God, Hallelujah. Do a new transformation. Yes. Raise up anointed pastors, teachers, yes, prophets, evangelists, apostles, bishops. In the name of Jesus. For me as are led by the spirit of God. They are the sons yes, of God. And the daughters of God. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for what you're going to do. God, you're moving throughout the earth. And we want to be on fire. For yes, you. God. You say, who makes your angel spirit? Yes. The ministers are playing on fire. Yes. Psalms 105, 4. Father, we thank you for all things you've done and what you're doing. Because in this hour, you're raising up people after your own heart. In Jesus' name, we pray to your glory. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Ryan, for the opportunity. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Calvin. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for being with us on this Tuesday night. Again, Tuesday nights is our various Bible study night. We just started this series on what biblical leadership looks like. This is part one, so next Tuesday, God willing, we'll be back with, with uh, part two. On Thursday, we will have the study in the book of Revelation. We are starting uh, Thyatira. You mm -hmm. guys can go to the uh, YouTube channel, Abiding in Christ 28, Abiding in Christ Ministries 2018. Or you can go to our website, uh, abidinginchristministries.org. You can contact us there. We can get you guys some resources uh, for growing in your Christian walk, um, marriage resources, uh, new convert resources. You can also reach out to me on Facebook, too. I can get you some resources. We can get you some help as far as uh, growing in Christ. And Amen. We just want to build you up and draw you closer to Jesus Christ. Everything is yeah. about pointing you to yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And you guys that are watching this later on on replay, we thank you so much for your encouragement and support of the yeah. man. Again, you guys can visit the website, abidinginchristministries.org or the YouTube channel, Abiding in Christ Ministries 2018. Thank you so much, Pastor Myers. For Thank being you, here. Uh, you guys can go and follow our brother, Pastor Myers, Calvin Myers, on Facebook. 
Word of Fire uh, Ministry. And they, they, you guys are on every Friday, right? Yes, sir. Uh, I'll put that up. Uh, Bible study. Yes, call sir. in Bible study. From 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. One yeah. hour. One hour, yeah. Every Friday. Sam, first Sammy chapter 16 about the anointing. Yeah, you First Sammy that. chapter 16. Amen. So we'll share that, that information with you guys. And um, you guys share the video. Like I said, every Tuesday and Thursday, it's 8.35 p.m. Uh, God bless you guys. Uh, inboxes, you know, we will we'll be willing to talk with you, pray with you, and uh, just point you to Jesus Christ and help you in any way we can. So God bless you guys. Uh, have a blessed night. We love you. And Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you so much, uh, brother, for your time. God bless Thank you for the opportunity. Amen. Love you guys. God bless you, brother.